All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I got Jenny Brinkman, a long-term friend of mine on the show. Jenny is from Hamburg, Germany, started working for a big corporation, has a background in music, transitioned into entrepreneurship, and then life coaching, and then maybe some, uh, some, some TV opportunities in the near future, which we will discuss later. The reason why Jenny is on the show is not only because she's a good friend of mine, but with that zeitgeist, with the notion of I quit, and there's been a lot of it lately with the great resignation or the great reconsideration, I thought who better to bring um, onto this, this show tonight and have Jenny maybe talk a little bit about her journey, how she, how she started, how she pivoted, and where she's at right now. And uh, we can take a couple of uh, key takeaways uh, from, from her merging into entrepreneurship, but more so also being a, a great person and following her own dreams and beliefs. Jenny, um, thanks so much for being here tonight. Give us a little feel for your background and what people should know about you, and then we'll dive into things. Thank you very much, Ace, for having me. I can't of wait course. for a beautiful introduction. And let's hop right into it. From the beginning of, I think, the, th the 2000s, mm -hmm. after being done with school, I was very much into music. Mm -hmm. An artist is who I am. And um, I sang and was signed to a record label. After that, I had the opportunity, the opportunity to, 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 to actually excel in my artistry. Mm -hmm. After school then, I decided, because I got a lot of pressure from home, to study tech. And I was okay with studying tech, but was it really my passion? Well, I don't know. Um, I had to surrender to the pressure <laughs> that came from my family. And right, right. of course, this is what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to study. So I fulfilled that task and got employed. After that period of time when I was working for Shell, mm -hmm. I realized that because I wasn't doing music no more, I was pursuing my career in tech and I got very bored and I created a MySpace page. And over time I generated quite a following because people from my music days were still having me in their mailing list and they got a notification that I had created this MySpace page. So And your MySpace page, what was that about? And maybe let's take it one step back further because there may be people on the show who don't even know what MySpace are or, or what MySpace was. So MySpace was a platform that came from Facebook, which was actually the creative notion of Facebook, I would call it. So a lot of artists were on MySpace. You had gimmicks on there, you had music on there, and you could really show your craft and your artistry on that page. And you could show off your friends mm -hmm. who you're connected to, and your community was able to write you messages. So it was the cooler version of a Facebook page, I would call it. Well, I think initially, right, it was there before Facebook even. And I, I, I do think it was, you know, you could showcase more things. And then I think Facebook locked down the technology better. It was a cleaner, simpler interface, and it was easier for people to connect. But yes, um, I, I think most of us who were on social media at some point in time all had a MySpace profile or page or whatever you want to name that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that brought me to connecting, reconnecting with people from my record label days. They hit me up, they saw the work that I had on the page. I had some hair work and some music on and I just filled it up with all the things that I was interested in. Basically, in my lunch breaks at Shell, you know, I was working uh, for for the, the, the oil company Shell and mm -hmm. <laughs> in my break I was just connecting with these people. So. Uh, I remember Questlove asked me whether I wanted to tour with him because he's coming to Europe because it looks like I would be the best person to styling him and he would really love to have me on tour. But so Questlove that... found you through your Facebook page randomly or were you connected <laughs> through the label that you were with at the time? No, I got connected to Questlove around about the 2001 and we lost uh, contact mm -hmm. and track other but he got notified via email that mm -hmm. i created this myspace page so wow. that's how we reconnected and he was about to come to europe and he thought 
because my work was actually good that he could hire me. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't into styling. It was just in my leisure time when I styled people and I just put my work up. What I was actually doing is working in tech. And also the singing aspect wasn't no more, but I had the urge to becoming more creative because I was sure. super bored in my job. So right. I wanted to find, you know, connection again towards that creative aspect. So it came in handy, I must say. And he invited me to a Thanksgiving dinner in Berlin with Quentin Tarantino, a porn star, the Roots crew, <laughs> and I think the rock group. It was really crazy, and, but it sounded, like you said, like an eclectic, Eclectic uh, group of people. <laughs> exactly. So long story short, that was my starting point because when I met him and when I styled him, he was like, take the photos and put them up. You should promote your craft. And I was mm -hmm. like, yo, I don't know whether I'm ready and I'm not even licensed because in Germany, we are, we have to be licensed. You have to be very have. by the book in Germany. Yes, you yes. have to be licensed, you have to be certified, you cannot just pull up and be it the way that it is in America. Mm -hmm. So I was anxious and I was a little bit like, I, you know, I, I wasn't too sure whether it's the right timing and he pushed me into the equation. So from there, after uploading his photos, mm -hmm. I had messages coming in via email from MTV, where I love MTV a runway show and it, there were so many things coming up um they had a cooperation with vela and and vela is a hair company or what's yeah, vela it, it's a major hair company okay so it, it's a major deal and it's a major hair company and only pros work for vela okay so i wasn't trained as that this is what i thought but they still wanted me and i flew out to new york i performed very well I styled what I could style and I did a good job. So they kept hiring me and, and I did that for a while. And, and when you say you styled them, were you mainly doing hair things? Was it makeup? Was it both or, or was it? So, so what, I, what, I, what I learned or what I, in my leisure time, you know, thought myself yes. was get prepared for hair and makeup because that's uh -huh. what we do. Germany. Little did I know that in America, in America, mostly there is a hair person and then there is a makeup person mm -hmm. and there is a closet person. But mm -hmm. I learned all of these things as one because that was the way we do it in Germany. You have to be prepared for everything. But I was only responsible for hair at that time. Uh -huh. So they kept hiring me. And from that job, I went to LA. And from LA, I went back to New York, but I was still, mind you, I was still working in that office. So, and so how did you do that? Did you just have like more vacation? I mean, I mean, here in the States, we get, you know, nothing but like two, three weeks vacation a year. I had to call myself sick at some You point. called it sick. <laughs> and I hope that there will be no repercussions. <laughs> on that behalf, but it's in, in German we call it tailleur. I really don't know how we call that in English, but I think it's it's bygone. It's it's been a long time, so right. I think it can be forgiven. But I called in sick because I wanted to make that money. You understand? Right. So I prioritized what needed to be done. I wanted to do this, so sometimes I had to do what I had to do. And uh, lucky enough, also at that time I had enough holiday as well so i had open you know i i uh had, you had enough vacation days accrued to, enough, to you know room to to just you know go away for two days or three days so so it was possible for me to actually take a leave or just be be out there so i could right. do that i did it and, and use that time and you know literally after a while sammy deluxe who is german's quote unquote jay-z mm -hmm has hired me as well and he brought me into a segment that mtv was having it was called all eyes on semi deluxe right and then, i see yeah and and he let me use his platform as my platform around the inauguration time where obama you know got elected sure um to show my company and he mentioned my company numerous times and that made me to skyrocket quite a bit in germany 
And then your company just, uh, I think we just browsed over it briefly. So I guess like two things. One, semi deluxe, you, you call them the Jay-Z of Germany. Fair comparison. I'm, I'm sure he's going to love that one. But all jokes aside, um, semi deluxe was one of the biggest hip hop artist in Germany for, for probably a decade. And I do think he still releases music to this day. Um, you know, I've kind of lost sight of him a little bit because sometimes you can't uh, keep track of all the good friends and homies. But um, yeah, and then um, secondly, tell us very briefly what your company did. Was it you offering your services, you offering hair products? Tell us what you had on your, I believe it was an e-commerce business in the, in the greatest sense, right? Exactly because I added e-commerce to my craft. So right. you could hire me and a team to mm. come to your set or to flying out to wherever the, the job needed to be done. I Record see. labels could, could hire me or my team that I put together. Then I had a web shop with hair products and you know wigs that, you know, all types of things in regards of hair and beauty. So yeah. I started that e-commerce page and then I did the styling, but also in a way communicated with an audience that I created through Instagram because the artists started to give me shout outs. So I generated a following and I also communicated with them, of course. So all of that went into promoting my artistry, promoting myself and generating sales, you know, from that aspect too. So I think you really, really the very early on, because when we're talking about Instagram, I mean, this was what, like 2010, 12? Because that's, I think, when Instagram launched, right? Yeah, 2010, 2011. That was the time when I started with Instagram and where it pretty, you know, it, it was, I had a big following. That account got hacked, unfortunately, but I kept it going. <laughs> And um, so I kept it going. And, and that was the German starting point where I got a following, I started to generate sales. And from then on, you know, I was going back and forth from jet lag to jet lag, going to LA, flying out to LA, flying back to New York, coming back to Hamburg mm -hmm. and doing all these things uh, in order to maintaining my life in Germany and my life in the in the states basically as well where i then had to decide what am i doing right will i continue um to travel from jet lag to jet lag or will i now decide what can i leverage off of the most where am i making the most you know income so i decided to quit my job mm. and um yeah lucky enough I, I had a very good friend that guided me through the times of quitting my job she gave me a client that she was having in a project in order to supporting my endeavors so i started working for aida cruises and well let's we, pause we, just for one moment because yeah. i think this is so crucial right you worked for a corporation Correct. then you started a side hustle how how many months or years was this going on before you quit almost two years so almost then you you had a had. you had a side hustle for two years and then you build up the income and the courage to quit and this yeah. is the year of 2012 11 2011 mm -hmm. so now ladies and gents um i think this is so interesting because if you think about it right a lot of uh, people in 2022 so 11 years later saying i quit um in the media here in america we had the great resignation and now the great reconsideration. So people have been talking about this a lot, reconsidering their lives, maybe not wanting to be in a corporate umbrella anymore. You can you know, find a lot of people on Instagram, YouTube, any of the social media channels saying, I quit my job as a lawyer. I quit my job as a high performing investment banker. I quit my job and you, know, you name it and you'll find somebody. And it seems to be really just you know, that zeitgeist and you were really way ahead of your times, I think, right? Like, because you probably didn't have very many role models where you could look up and say, well, this guy, you know, left or this girl left and, and you know, maybe is doing something that's a little bit more in alignment with their personality. So kudos yeah. to you. So, but um, one or two more things I heard you say that, that are important is 
you did build a bit you did build an income up over two years because oftentimes people here just want to quit without a backup plan you had a backup plan and then on top of it you were just saying that a very good friend of yours actually helped you with a large client um, that brought in some additional income correct and that came impromptu that was the day when i quit my job where she handed me a bouquet and a nice book which is the guideline for freedom actually mm. and that very night, she helped me to structure my price point because she said, you're a high-end product, you sell high-end products, and your craft, your skill is a niche product that doesn't exist in Germany. So you have to have a higher price range, which classifies your quality. You should stick to quality. And that's what we created that very night. And then she proposed to me that gift or that offer. She handed that to me and she was like, and I have a surprise for you. So that was the surprise. So she dashed me her client, which wow. is beautiful. And what which, a friend. Which, yeah. yeah, which is really out of the norm and which is a nice guideline and also a nice motivator when looking into one day I can do that for someone else. Because yes. this is fully out of the norm. I, well, well, and I think, you know, people, I'm sure you've heard this before. Oh, Jenny, you've just gotten lucky, right? Exactly. And what people don't see is there's a, a big motivational speaker here in, or a coach or whatever you want to call them in the United States. His name is Tony Robbins, and I don't even know if it's his acronym, but he said luck is labor under controlled knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think this is so interesting to think about, right? So. You don't necessarily know where the journey goes to, but if you don't start laboring and you don't have a North Star saying, hey, you know, like these are the things I enjoy doing in my life and I'm willing to say, you know, I'm not going out, I'm not partying, I'm, you know, like working on the weekends, I'm working at night, maybe I'm, you know, working on and during my vacation to just make something happen, then then that's when the opportunities will, you know, come to you. And it, I, I think your story is a good example of that. Yeah, do you believe in luck as such? I don't believe, I think luck is, Oprah also had a, a quote, but I can't really recall. Mm -hmm. I think luck is your preparation, you have to, you know, without the delivery of the right. matter, luck doesn't matter, you know? Luck is, I think luck doesn't exist. I think making, making putting that work in will, will be your luck, you know? I think luck, mm -hmm. you know, to, to call it always has to well, always well, have to deliver well we can make this easy there's a good quote and it goes something like that the harder i work the luckier i get that's a good quote right i'm looking up oprah's quote that's a really good quote and it, it it is similar to what oprah said let me let me see what she said not wanting to take uh you off of topic but um i believe luck is preparation meeting opportunity exactly mm -hmm. that's how i feel about it too if you hadn't been prepared when the opportunity came along you wouldn't have been lucky absolutely and i and i agree with that personally yeah. right exactly it's a preparation phase you, and i think you have to be out there and you have to do something for people to see you like at the end of the day you know a lot of people these days want to be laptop lifestyle entrepreneurs but the, 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 the bottom line is be that in politics, be that in business, be that in niches or niches of business, you still work with people and you still have clients as real people. So going out there and, and, and you know, making it happen or at least whatever that means to you is kind of what it takes. And it's, you know, not as easy as sitting at home watching your Netflix and, right. and uh, ordering and your pizza just, online, right? People just want to see the glitz and the glam and we can't help it. That's how we as people are. We just don't see the labor. We just see the successes. We see the red carpets, but we don't know what we had to go through in order to getting there. And that comes with the hate, you know, that comes along with your career. And uh, yeah, as we keep discussing, Germany at that time wasn't really a place filled with love. People mm. were very skeptical and they didn't understand because I wasn't sharing everything due to also a confidentiality clause, NDAs, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't 
to be able to sharing everything and people were skeptical like how is it that this girl is on the market for six months and she's now touring the world she is almost touring with every other artist i have in my playlist so people couldn't really catch up with my pace and it is a lonely road not having anybody doing the same thing at that time we were like only a few people doing what I was doing. So you couldn't really share your experiences. And I felt in America, I was acknowledged and saluted for what I've done. People were like, you want to fulfill your mm -hmm. dream? It will be very possible for you to fulfill your dream. Let's go, let's do this. But that wasn't the sentiment the German people were having. They were oftentimes very skeptical or well, I don't know why you're living this life, but are you sure that this is really happening to you? And I got tired over time mm -hmm. and dealt with it in a way where I just didn't listen to anybody. I was just thriving, doing my thing and um, yeah, kept it going. And, and then I started, you know, building my reputation, my good German reputation, whereby um, I met a lot of people and I started working with a lot of artists that, that people had in their playlist. And so when you say working, like one, I mean, obviously your social media channels grew, but what was interesting to see is like for those of you, for those of us who didn't follow you or didn't know who you were at the time, what would you post? Would you post just, you know, pictures of your work, like how you work with celebrities or did the whole, you know, Jenny creating her own message and, you know, being a person of influence, of, of positive inspiration, and then, you know, the, the coaching platform that you have now, was that already part of the piece or how did that, what did that look like for you? I would say if you are styling an artist or somebody, mm -hmm. it goes along, not for everyone, but in my case, it went along with coaching them. What I remember mm. when I came to is sometimes I was called for a conversation, not always for styling. Of course, I styled them, yes. But for the most part, people knew that they could talk to me and mm -hmm. I would keep it confidential. So I feel that I always was coaching, but I wasn't labeled as a coach by then mm -hmm. because I wasn't licensed or anything. But as you style them, you listen to their stories. It's the same, it, it, it's the same thing when you go to a hairdresser and you start talking about your life and they become your quote unquote shrink, right? right. So you start talking to them they become your therapist, they become your pastor, your right. counselor, you know, your your marriage counselor, whatever, because people start to open up. So I feel that that aspect of coaching was always there, but I didn't label it as that because I was a stylist. I styled, I did closet styling, I did hair styling, and I did makeup. So mm -hmm. I had enough room talking to male and female. and. There was a lot to talk about. And, you know, also in your private life, people hit you up. They keep you updated on what's going on. So that was normal to me. But um, looking into, you know, working and seeing it as as what it was, mm -hmm. I, over time, um, you know, had the stream. I had the stream where I dreamt that there was a lady in a glass house and she was smiling and she said, if you smile and motivate the nation as I wanted to go back to Germany and more devote myself in, to, the, to the German market and mm -hmm. establish myself in the German field, I had this dream. And I, you know, accordingly to that dream, made a video because in my dream, that lady said that I would generate 14,000 followers only with my smile and with my motivational message which mm -hmm. was beautiful so i shot that video on the first day of november 2013 no i had the dream that day so six days later i shot the video and i was like so everybody watch you know watch this channel and if you don't watch it i will delete it so then from there and that's what on, you posted on instagram i assume I posted it, you know, I, I rather posted the shout outs that the artist gave me yeah. and I generated a following through that. Of course, before, when I was in Hamburg, when I was at home, I, you know, posted my motivational stuff, sure. but um, my German journey started with that YouTube channel. You know, okay. you, Instagram was one thing, it was more yes. tourist related, it was more Americanized, so to speak. Yes. 
but uh, my YouTube channel was actually my German path. So I can see that. And let me correct me if I'm wrong. I, I also do think people have a better opportunity to get to know you if they decide to listen in that long form format. I mean, today it seems like everybody just, you know, does 30 second things, but I do feel like that long, long form format where you can actually tell a story or share, you know, long ideas is really a better way to, to connect with your audience. Yeah, at that time it was a perfect way to connecting with the audience. But mm -hmm. we have to say today we have the reels right. DNA, where yeah, <laughs> where that will also generate more following, especially on Instagram with that weird algorithm. But that's another story. So back in the right. day, it was really, it was really good to 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 being on on YouTube and to generating a following. So I think after three months or four months, I had hit 14k as I saw in my dream. Mm -hmm. That was my confirmation by the Most High God that this is really working. And then I uh, continued talking about wellness, talking about giving advice, coaching in a way. Right. I talked about my traumas, my dieting journey, and shared all the information because my YouTube became very, very authentic, mm -hmm. and it. Was guiding me through life and I just shared my life basically right. I just shared what I was doing so at some point I was really into working out into also dieting and the health aspect the mental healing uh, nutrition and all of that I started sharing and generated more following through that as well yeah I mean there's a real need for it we've seen it in 2021 especially with athletes like Naomi Osaka, Simone Biles, you know, bowing out of the Olympic Games, you know, just saying, hey, mental health is a big thing and I'm trying to take care of it. And even though they may have received quite a bit of uh, flack for it, um, they were brave enough to speak openly about it. And uh, you, you just came to this a, a decade early. And it, again, it showed that, you know, people have a need to connect about it, right? I think mental health perhaps 20, 30 years ago, talking about it openly in Germany was a taboo. And I think the America in general was maybe a little bit more progressive, but still to this day and age, you know, we, we all need more, more safe places and more communities to talk about that. Cause I mean, tell me, name one successful person or one person in general that hasn't had a, an up and down or a major up and down yet. Right? Like, I mean, like, everybody in my circle of friends has had something you know they were working on and needed help with definitely and i also discussed relationship issues and you know started more and more platforms and room also on snapchat i had heart aber herzlich you know heart aber herzlich so we'll have to translate that uh it, it, it means something i'd say in america we would say tough love right <laughs> exactly so that was basically my tough love platform where people sent in their questions and I responded to them very, very truthful and very mm -hmm. blunt, uh, kind, heartfelt, but also very, very real. I kept it very real with the audience, which they really liked. And that was my beginning stage of coaching. And okay. I really, with the questions that came in, they became more and more crucial and, you know, trigger alert suicidal behavior um rape and all of those things mm -hmm. you know, is a different ball game i right. couldn't very I heavy stuff about, yeah yes, you know having that responsibility and coaching that wasn't really my forte so how am i going to deal with it not dealing with it at all but the, more and more questions came in and i knew in a way that at some point in my life i might have to tackle that and understand that there are a lot of people that will want to listen to my advice. So I should, at some point of my life, maybe see it as my obligation mm -hmm. to, you know, be resourceful and to read into these things and, you know, get get licensed and, and see to it that I at least push their energy into the right direction to getting a therapist. Yes. To go to a therapist to going to a specialist because mind you a life coach coaches need coaches too absolutely and i wasn't qualified to 
advise someone who got raped. So I right. would, be, you know, they come here and I would have to refer someone to them that is a specialist. But, you know, I had to get the gist of it. And I came to the understanding that at some point in my life, this might be what I will be doing. But absolutely, I didn't, I didn't feel ready because the responsibility of people's life and also of what they are going through was in the beginning very heavy and sure. it took a toll on me. So I needed to get ready. And I got ready after my turmoil, which I will not address. Right. But I went through a very hard time in 2019 mm -hmm. and I had a very strong connection to my audience. I formed a really strong connection. So they were with me, they were going through it with me. But by doing so, I was able to understand that now I'm experiencing how things can really go down the drain and I have to get up either I will pick life or I will perish and I pick life. And my motivation was also to pick up myself so that I can motivate someone else. So sure. the motivation in motivating someone else was it for me, you know, because that made me to, to understand it's necessary that I come out of this so that I can teach someone how to do it. Mm -hmm. So that has also saved my life personally. And that's when it all started. So, and when we are saying that's when it all started, we are transitioned into becoming a coach or, you know, with your YouTube channel and your website and your coaching platform, Coach Jenny yeah. now, correct? Everything into becoming Coach Jenny. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's maybe take it one step back. I just have a couple of questions. One of the things that obviously a lot of your followers and, you know, the audience will ask themselves as well, how did she, how did she, you know, sustain herself? She had a big, um, you know, YouTube audience. It takes a lot of time to produce videos and run a channel and, you know, film yourself, edit a script and, or, you know, put some bullets together that are meaningful. Did you at that point in time like make money from ad revenue sponsorships or did you did you do some affiliate marketing or how did you know how did that help your bottom line because i mean obviously you know you're helping a lot of people or you're having an impact on a lot of people but you know in the meantime you also got to keep your own lights on right like so maybe talk a little bit about like was it mainly the, the the business, the website, the hair that you had, the stylist team, or was your most of your revenue now coming from, you know, the the work you did on social media? So at that time, I was focusing more on coaching after mm -hmm. going through it. But sometimes there were still tours in Europe that I, you know, clients that I had. Also, some artists in Germany mm -hmm. still came to me for styling. So, so that was. I generated an income there. I still had my e-commerce page. I generated an income there um, to preparing hair pieces and wigs and things of, 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 of that sort in order to generating an income. But then also um, affiliate marketing, you know, having corporations with companies and really being realistic about their products. I never ever promoted a product that I wasn't digging. So that mm -hmm. was very necessary to me because my audience just was dear to me. And I was like, I cannot tell them, you know, I cannot BS them. I have to tell them the truth. Sure. So people came on my platform also for the real report and for understanding what Jenny really likes. Mm -hmm. So there were companies that I cooperated with that generated an income and I wanted to do that because I didn't want it to create a coaching because I later in life also on aidoxygen.com I still have my uh, my eight week program my life mm -hmm. coach which is unisex and everybody can use it's uh, the level up coaching it's you know when you really want to get to the next level of self-love and understanding who you are mm -hmm. and get back on your feet. That's what we do. That is okay. the method of what, what needs to be done. And it's an eight week program with a lot of content, which is, you know, which everybody here should check out, but yeah, and we will link to it in the show notes for sure. Awesome. awesome. It, it's really crucial. It has helped a lot of people. I have a very good engagement rate and a very good success rate. So, 
um, it's, it's really helpful. But um, going back to what that was, I didn't want it to generate an income through that, although I did, but that wasn't my focus. The helping aspect here is my focus. Mm -hmm. The generating an income with corporations and affiliate marketing mm -hmm. was I was focusing in terms of income on, sure. you know, so one hand helped the other hand. Of course to becoming a life coach full-time and you know then I had one-on-one -on -one coachings as well which I don't um, really like to do due to the fact that you cannot really learn everything that you need to learn you know I created a full coaching for you know learning the foundation mm -hmm. of self-love so sometimes I feel you will learn more if you have all those videos that I've created instead of you know, having an hour with me, whereby you can have um, eight weeks with right. me, and that comes in handy, and it's financially more reasonable than you know talking to me. And so sometimes I just don't feel doing one-on-one -on -one coachings because of that, because I've created a full coaching in that. Right. Well, and I think you know you learn something as a coach too from coaching one-on-one -on -one because questions come up, but at the same time, you know, your time is your most valuable resource, okay. and in order to be accessible to a broader number of people, you do have to have like a one to many type of platform where you can deliver, you know, what you think are the key takeaways and what people need to learn. And I guess if people have the funds and resources to, to you know, book your time, then that, that makes perfect sense. And I think that's a great transition. I mean, if I were to summarize some of the things that you, that you said was one, I mean, you went from styling celebrities and running an e-commerce shop to building an audience like portraying some of your work and then with the work and the positive vibes and the you know good energy that you're sharing and which you know i've witnessed so so on so many occasions not just you know on 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 you know seeing some of your social media things that you post but also the way you interact with friends and, and family members right like that exudes through your social media channels and 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 you know your your social media platforms so then eventually people are flocking to this and asking you for for advice asking even you know very traumatic uh, questions about a very traumatic or troubled past perhaps and you know how how they can deal with that and that led you then eventually into wanting to help more and on a more profound level and being able to direct people in the right space you know understanding that you may not have had the right credentials to to help with really deep trauma and suicidal issues and and that sort of thing so no thanks for sharing that that's a it's a pretty fascinating journey i think um uh, i think that's a good point for us to then segment into maybe the 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 next question which is you know a lot of clients want to be coached a lot of or a lot of people want to be coached a lot of people want to get better i mean i for my part was a competitive basketball player and I always felt like it helped playing with better people. I have a, a, I have had access to you know a number of good coaches while I played and I mean this is many years ago I played in my in my youth. But I always saw myself as somebody who was coachable and again like I've seen this in the corporate environment helping me um as well. So maybe let's dive into that a little bit like if somebody wanted to hire a life coach like where would you point them to if they want to hire a life coach it, it really depends mm -hmm. i mean you know when you look from a german perspective i have some colleagues that i can pull up and i i can be like you know call them or but where how would i i would insert to google that i'm looking for a life coach honestly speaking and i would also right. insert that subject matter because in Germany we call I don't know Wegbegleiter. You know when you're a right. life coach when you're starting a companion off, of the way, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Who is, or know, a companion for your way, something like that. Yes, you know someone who is guiding you on your way on your right. journey. And uh, there there are even telephone numbers that you can dial in Germany, which is awesome. You can call. You know when I was going through it, I remember in 2019 and. You know, I was in the public eye in Germany, so I didn't want it to, you know, before I went to a therapist, mm -hmm. I actually wanted to- So a therapist for yourself is what you're saying, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I didn't want sure. to immediately go to a therapist. I wanted to start somewhere and talk to someone neutral. And I, 
I had a friend who is a dentist and he said that he has, um, you know, they have a family friend and that person is a pastor mm -hmm. and he's really good at listening and in giving good advice. So he gave me his number. He was like, try him out, just call him. And it was the best advice you could give me. So mm -hmm. sometimes you also could ask your friends or if you are not eager to asking your friends or your surroundings, you know, because you don't want to tell your mother everything. You don't want to tell your father everything or your brother. Sure. So I would suggest, I would recommend to Google someone and right. then start from there and call those telephone numbers and, and see who's fitting. Um, what I also came to the realization, sometimes you call someone, but they are not the right fit. Keep going, keep searching, you know, don't give up. Try to find your right fit. And that's not guaranteed. You don't know if you're going to find the right person for you, but you have to keep it going. But lucky enough, I called the number and I, it was in the beginning, honestly saying, it was very interesting to okay. open up to someone, you know, who doesn't know the backstory and who is willing to listen to me. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, I don't want to talk too much. I'm talking, no, 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 keep going, keep going. And he was very calm and he listened to everything. He started to give me good advice and it was actually awesome. It was actually, and I, I cried and I opened up and, and he was like, if you need more help or you need to call me anytime, call me anytime. And so I just, sometimes I was going through it, you know, and I just called him and cried. And, so was and he, he a licensed um, psychologist or what, what, what was know. his function exactly? He was a pastor. He was, he a, was pastor. a pastor. He was a pastor. And that is uh, the interesting part. If you coach, you don't need to be licensed in Germany. Mm. It's not mandatory to be licensed. You actually okay. can coach without being licensed. So this is what a lot of people don't know. Um, it's not about being licensed, being a life coach. You can, you can be a good listener. You can mm -hmm. be someone who is guide, who knows how to guide other people. You know, you can become a coach. You can create a platform where you talk to somebody, where you listen to somebody. So this is what he has done, and it helped me a lot. So I would recommend, if you ask me that question, where can I find someone who listens to me? I would use Google. We have, you know, our devices. You can insert life coach, your city, right. call a telephone number, an unbiased opinion never hurts and just talk to somebody. Always try to talk to somebody. I think, you know, sometimes people don't even, people realize they need help, but they don't necessarily know what the outcome should be or how they they can be helped, right? Like, you know, there's a difference between somebody who wants a peak performance coach to perhaps do better at work or do better at their business versus somebody who maybe has social anxiety or issues of, you know, leaving the house, you know, in the, maybe a more severe form, like just, you know, being afraid of everything to somebody who just wants to maybe be a better partner, spouse, husband, wife, you know, that sort of thing. Right. So, so I would think, and maybe you can add your thoughts to this, but if you're looking for a coach, finding a little bit of clarity first would be helpful, but how do you find the, the, that clarity? Maybe, um, you know, share some thoughts around that. Yes. So, you know, finding the clarity, we, because are we really clear when we search for counsel? Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes because we are so unclear about our issues is where we want to seek for answers. Like what mm -hmm. is going on with me? I need to let it out. I need to figure it out. Right. And I think clarity is not really necessary. I understand the point. I get it that mm. it help to identify your path mm -hmm. and it's ideal. It's actually ideal, but I think it may not always be too realistic because when you're going through it, it's that techno bubble in your head of information, that roller coaster mm -hmm. where there is too much coming in and where you just don't know what to do. And that is where it comes in handy to talk to someone so maybe not, even don't drive yourself nuts i need to have clarity before yeah. i find a coach is what i'm hearing yeah. but rather say yeah. well if you're having these thoughts well there's something wrong with me maybe just open up the book start flipping through it and and see you know is there a 
Start talking to someone. Maybe try to seek for help. That someone helps you to figure the issue out. Yeah. And and, and that's a, that's the point because sometimes it gets too heavy. It's too much, and it's hard for us to connect the dots of what's really happening with us. You right. get what I'm saying? I yes. understand. At, at at a point, you know, sometimes you know it's about the relationship issue I'm having. It's about mm -hmm. childhood trauma. But oftentimes we we just feel depressed, or right. we are going through this heavy depression. And we don't know what to do. So I think it would also help to figure out and and analyze what the issue can be. It's like a search of what the issue can be. And then it could be that you go from one person to the next, you know, mm -hmm. that person leads you to the next person and or that person is the solution to talk to. So and also to get more clarity is good to talk to someone else. Mm -hmm. And why would you say you know, work with a coach. Why not just, you know, go to a friend or I mean, coach, call it maybe a therapist, right? Like, I mean, I guess being a therapist kind of falls under that umbrella or vice versa. All right. So we were just talking about how, you know, people can go out and look for coaches online by talking to their network. But, you know, maybe to even take it back one, one step further, why shouldn't I be talking to just my friend as a coach or my girlfriend or, you know, my girlfriend, girlfriend's friend, right? Like, what, um, why do you think there is a value in having a coach actually in the first place? I think if you talk to your friends, it's not a crime. It's okay to, to talk to your friends, but they are not supposed to be in your coach, you know, mm. they are being your friend. Uh, so you can make it, you can give it a try, but you should never expect a coaching session coming from your friend. That's not what they are there for. That's not, it, it might not be their calling. So that can also lead to friction because you need someone who coaches you. You may need someone who understands you, but they are not obligated, obligated to helping you. Mm. But of course you can give it a try. It could be that that is the right path that is the right way but always keep in mind that they are not obligated to help you right i also you know think maybe one random thought but i i think friends will love you no matter what if you have good friends and there's always a little bit of bias there right let's say you have marital discord then everybody is going to side with you rather than being a unbiased <laughs> person right and so i do think that becomes particularly dangerous when your friends have an agenda, right? Like, cause I've seen that with my circle of friends as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like one friend thinks this other friend should be doing this. So they're trying to influence based on their set of values and beliefs, right? And I, I, I would hope, and you can, you know, possibly address this better than I can, but I would hope that a coach or a therapist can really give that unbiased opinion um, or that unbiased help, um, you know, so I, I do think there's some value in that. I would co-sign that, absolutely. And this is a very valid and very good point because that's absolutely true. You want a neutral opinion. You want someone who listens to your story without their own opinion implemented, you know. It, you know you can actually not really be unbiased if you know both parties it's very mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's far-fetched and i think if you have that friend that knows how to keep it neutral you can give it a shot but like i said they're not obligated to even if for instance i am in a relationship as a coach i'm not obligated to be their coach do you mm -hmm. get what i'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even being, of course, in my friend circle, to flip the script, I have a lot, lot of people that think that I am a coach. So I feel sometimes that they like to take my time right. into having a free coaching session. That's what we'll be doing after this call, right, Jenny? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that, you know? I'm so, kidding, of course. I will be doing that every day, all day long. So I keep right. telling my friends, you can book a coaching session. Right. Like, so here, you know, I'm listening to your story for two hours now. It doesn't make sense. You right. know? And, and that brings up a good point. I can see, you know, when you're trying to get established as a coach, probably a lot of your 
friends or acquaintances think that's perhaps a free service that should be available to them. And um, some people see it as natural. Some people mm -hmm. think that this is what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Hell no. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I need my energy for myself. I, I'm, <laughs> I don't need to be in a coaching mood 24 seven. I'm only human. I have to be ready for this. But you know, this is where we as coaches, which is also very interesting for people that want to become coaches, you know, okay. to make, making that transition from where can you find a coach to how can you become a coach? Okay. You know, this is an advice that I would give you. You have to be very skillful and very delicate with your craft. You cannot give that out to anybody because people think that you are obligated to being in coaching mood 24 seven. Mm -hmm. You will be burned out. You need to rejuvenate too. And if somebody needs your services and you feel you are in a coaching mood, of course, you can do that from time to time. We are all human beings. If you hop into the equation and all of a sudden you want to help, that's fine. But you are not obligated as a coach to coach the whole world. Absolutely. No, you're not. And this is what happened to me where sometimes I feel very, it, it feels draining to, you know, listen to people that think that you have to coach them now. No, you're right. my friend. I am not your coach. So if you want me to coach you, please make an appointment. Sure. You know, this is my- When it's setting boundaries is probably something you teach um, clients. Okay. But before we jump into that, I, I think that wraps up a, a good part, um, you know, from how do I find a coach? And I agree with you. Let's segment now into how do I become a coach and maybe the things to be mindful of. And, you know, I mean, just to really summarize briefly what you said, if you wanted to, or if if I'm hearing you right, if you want to become a coach, be prepared that your friends, family, and perhaps acquaintances will reach out and receive coaching for free if they already like you. And they say, well, but pull you aside and say, well, can I have some of your time? I'm going through this thing here. Can you help me real quick? So maybe maybe jump into that and say, what's the one of the first things you would you would tell an aspiring coach to to watch out or be mindful of? So first of all, I would like to tell you as an aspiring coach that the world needs coaches. Mm. There are all aspects of life that you can coach in. Mm -hmm. You can become a behavior coach. You can become a soccer player coach. Mm -hmm. Whatever coach you want to become, there is room for you. We need coaches in this world. We need people who specialize themselves into teaching someone else what they have, what they can do. We need coaches. So, so you are very needed. You are very needed and very, very highly wanted. What I would recommend is before you pursue becoming a coach, see for yourself and understand your calling. Mostly a coach knows that he has or she has that coaching ability, mm -hmm. you know? So you're allowed to being a coach. You can start coaching in your circle. If you see that someone needs help and someone need, needs guidance, practice coaching, practice being a coach, be it before you be it for real. And, and that brings up a very good point. I think I want to pause you here just for a second and slow things down. So this is a question that will come up, right? Like how, how do I get started? And what you're saying is if you have friends, if you feel like, you know, you have a calling to help people coach people actually sit down with somebody and do that service for free. Or I, I'm not sure if that's what you're suggesting, but it sounds like coach yeah. him you know like for for free or, or or until you feel comfortable with it coach in your environment right see if you can coach a kid see yes. what your what your forte is what your talent is what is it that you want to coach classify it and focus on that field research research and deliver your message you have yes. a message deliver in germany i keep saying because i don't know how it goes in america maybe i need your help with that mm -hmm. we have Jorgen telephone like everybody mm -hmm. can sign up towards being 
a guidance for someone else, you know, everybody can sign up to being called, to receiving telephone calls. Good point. Yeah, Zong telephone, so like a, a, the, the, the telephone line that helps you with your worries would be called a crisis line here in the US. And I don't know what the requirements are for people working on the crisis line, but I, I would think they they get some basic training, but they don't need to be licensed uh, uh, therapist, you know, be the be a, a PhD therapist or somebody who has gotten a master's in psychology. I do think it's very similar to the Zorgen telephone in, in Germany that our crisis line of first responders for people who have an emotional crisis and that is a very good point so you're suggesting hey if you just wanted to get the repetition and some of the practice maybe see if you can join a a zorgen telephone a crisis line and get get your get your feet wet or your you know for instance 9 11 look at 9 11. Mm -hmm. you know there were people actually offering those services mm -hmm. people needed to talk to somebody so if you're a good listener, you will listen to someone and that is psychological trauma. But at that point, you know, someone need, you know, people were, people were there. You, you could talk to them. Pastors went, went out to the scene. You could talk to them, qualified people, but sure. also random people showed up because sure. it was, there was a high demand for people that listen to other people's worries. And you cannot deny it. I mean, this is what happened and, and everybody is affected. Right. So, to so everybody got something to say and something to listen to. So I would say, take your chance in stepping into the equation. Mm -hmm. If you, for instance, are involved in church, for instance, I know that if you join like a church community, oftentimes you can, you know, help the youth in, in, in a church realm, for instance, um, to coach the youth or to implement, you know, teaching them how to sing or, for instance, also, look, when people go, when, when children go to school, there's their, um, dieser Elternbeirat, you know, sometimes yes. people, you know, the children that go to school, sometimes the parents help, you know, the, the, the parents help the students you know, I have the students where you have a kid in that class and, and you step into the equation as a parent to give help to the teacher. We, we have these things. We have these things going on. This is also a form of, you know, helping okay. someone else out. So if you have the ability to help someone else, I think that's the starting point of coaching someone, you know? But yeah. No, I, I would agree 100%. And I think that's an easy, easy path to um, follow, which I think leads me into like my, my, my next question, really, like, so yes, once you get your feet wet, how do you then build your audience? Let's say you don't want to go the traditional route where you're going to school for years and years to become a, a clinical counselor or a psychologist. Um, you know, how do you how do you build your audience or what would you recommend what's worked for you what have you seen in the field in terms of social media as such or in terms of uh the clientele that i both serve? right like because you, you can use social media to build your audience that will then become clients right or will you know want to be part of your coaching platform what what would you say yeah i can only give you my subjective opinion mm -hmm. it should Never ever the number or the building aspect of an audience should never ever be your guideline for doing so. Mm -hmm. um, you should never break it down to a number or for the cost of building an audience. Never ever. In all of this social media work that we are doing, of course, we have this idea where we want to build an audience, where we want to gravitate toward, gravitate towards an audience, and where we also define a specific target group. Mm -hmm. But you should only like this is an advice that i give everyone who is working in the field of social media in the first year especially year one and year two it's mm -hmm. very profitable it's very you, you may not earn anything and you may not form that kind of an audience that you would think of possibly mm -hmm. because the algorithm plays a role sure. uh, the alignment plays a role like everything plays into whom you will become so you rather focus on your craft you rather mm -hmm. focus on having the motivation sure. to deliver the, delivering your message, to helping people, guiding people through. That should be 
you 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 have to be purposeful and focus on that only yes. and let it organically grow mm -hmm. you know as a side effect don't focus on the growth rather focus on your craft on yourself what you have to deliver and specify that become better in that field if you have only one client which is enough work on that client make sure that they are right one client or one viewer mm -hmm. With one view, you're already hitting the jackpot. That's how you have to see it. Because you can save a life to make it, you know, I don't want to sound sound weird with this, but if you motivate one person in this world right. and give perspective, it is more worth than motivating a thousand people and not giving them the right perspective. You get what I'm saying? I get I get 100 what you're saying. And I'll say two things to that. One. I, you know, I list, I mean, I, I grew up with hip hop. I'm a big Eminem fan, right? And um, one of one of his lines, and I'm gonna butcher it, but like the it, essentially the message was, he said, you know, if I can inspire one kid with my music, um, you know, I will have had an impact, right? And it's so true. One of my very good friends, uh, Vanessa Herrn von Auerkirch, who lives in Singapore. And she's, you know, she got her PhD in psychology, but before she got the PhD, she had a master's degree and a bachelor's. And she started working with autistic kids or mildly autistic kids and took clients, the first one or two clients out of her father's house. And that's where she was seeing them. Fast forward 10 years later, and she has a very lucrative and successful business model, a school that impacts the, 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 the lives of parents and you know, 70 to 100 students in, in any given month, which is, you know, it's so inspiring um, because not only she's, so she lived in Germany, she, um, you know, lived in the United States. Now she's lived in Singapore for such a long time. She's a minority business owner and she is, you know, started, as you said, with one client, right? Like, and she ha she's had an impact on one client. So that I think um, is, is a very good point. Um, is there anything else that you would want to say or share with anybody who is interested in merging into uh, into the coaching field before we, you know, wrap this up? I would just say be authentic. Mm -hmm. Your character and your authenticity is what we need in this world. That's why I'm saying everybody is different. Everybody is divine and unique. So there is room for everybody. And there are so many things like you can coach, you can become a coach in every aspect and every field. Mm -hmm. So see where your strengths are. What do you really want to listen to? Um, can you differentiate? Like, are you taking, does it bother you to listen to people? Because you will become a listener and you will get, give advice. So you should love what you are doing. If right. you don't love it, I think you're not you're not obligated to doing so. You should love talking to people. You should love caring for people. So my advice is identify your who you are as a person. You don't need to be perfect. My advice also for you is to understand we don't need perfect people. We are all not perfect. And like I said in the beginning, coaches need coaches too. So it's mm -hmm. all right who still are going through it. That is authenticity. Going through it and being filled with flaws, which I am too, is <laughs> only natural. And it will make you to talking to people from a more authentic perspective. My, my uh, clients, they don't want to listen to a perfect Jenny. They want to listen to a Jenny that has been through it. Right. and that knows how to look this way after being through it you know what i mean so it's very necessary that you remain authentic and that you focus on yourself as well of your own development and uh and also your own mental health right so and it's okay if you are not it's okay if sometimes you can't coach it's right. okay if sometimes you can coach and there will be days where you may not coach everything because mm -hmm. you may be going through it yourself. Right. And this is also okay. You know, free flow, be motivated and see your calling and the fun in motivating someone. 
right and do it for the purpose of doing so not for the purpose of being famous not for the purpose of being in newspapers or magazines do it for the person of motivating someone for real who will have a better life possibly through your story and be open to telling your story your full story is needed don't beat around the bushes say it how it is that's my advice to everyone who wants to coach i personally love it when people are authentic there might be people that love perfect people so mm -hmm. you go to a perfect coach <laughs> they might be <laughs> i hate perfect coaches i hate them because well and perfection is the enemy of progress right i just hate that you know i'm also a perfectionist but i know how unrealistic it is like right. you are hiding something if you if you play perfect i know that you're hiding something because everybody right. who's been perfect that i got to know was so flawed like like nobody is perfect in this world this is all that i want to tell you and that's my that's by my own experience so i i just don't buy into perfection right i just don't buy into that story like me personally i don't but someone else might so you look for someone who is perfect i would mm -hmm. never I would never look for someone who's perfect, but I would look for someone who, who understands where I'm coming from. So, and and mm -hmm. I also accept, for instance, you know, pedaling back to, to to finding a coach. You know, I would also not expect for everyone to understand my story. I think this is very necessary to touch upon because mm -hmm. this is an experience that you may not always be successful. Don't throw in the towel. Do not throw in the towel. You may not be successful in your first attempt to finding the right person for you. It took me, I think, three people after right. I found the right person for myself. Mm -hmm. So be patient with that too. We are all human and not everybody will understand your story. You know, not everybody gravitates towards what you got to tell them. So you leave them and go to the next person until you find the right one. Who understands your story? How do you feel about that? Don't you think that I'm? Was it the same way with you, or did you like how? What What is your experience in that regard? Well, I mean, let me uh, let me circle back to a few things you said. I think you delivered a lot of value here in your summary and your your key points of not only getting into coaching but finding a coach. Authenticity. I want to comment on that because I feel like it's a term used a lot. And it's sometimes hard for people to wrap their minds around what does that even mean? Right. And if I even if I look at you, like it's perhaps easy for you to say, well, I'm, you know, I'm Jenny, I'm authentic. But look at your journey where you started 10 years ago from, you know, working corporate, then getting into entrepreneurship, helping celebrities with their styling and the way they look to then getting props to getting these questions and then realizing well, maybe my true calling is to become a coach, right? And I know there are a couple of other things in the works for you right now that we'll address before we wrap up. So authenticity, I don't think, you know, like people need to even stress it too much as long as they know they're working, as you said, right? Like try to make an impact in one person's life. When I was a basketball player, I had like my neighbor's kids come and wanting to learn from me. I enjoyed that. When I was in, in music, you know, I had kids who wanted to learn how to rap and do things with me and the business you know i taught um small business owners how to invest like bigger business owners and all those things so so i think you know start small and then you can grow from there and figure out what authenticity means and i don't know like if my authentic self today will be the same authentic self that I'm going to be, you know, 10 years from now. So I, I don't think people need to be terribly hard on themselves, but, you know, being true to themselves, that, that I, I would agree that matters. The second thing I wanted to say that you, where you brought up such a good point is, you know, learning how to listen if you want to be a coach is key. And I, I just did a video a few months ago on like five ways of making money online. And one of the things I came across are platforms, and I'd used them in the past, but platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, where people can offer their services. Well, believe it or not, there are categories where people will actually just lend their ear to a stranger who wants to just maybe talk things out. So if you think you can listen, you can sign up on Fiverr or Upwork and- um, Nobody and, booked me. I gotta try that again. Maybe right. my price was too high. But yeah, it's a it's a great that's a great option. And, make it one dollar. I'll make it 
Absolutely, get your feet wet. And the last thing I'll say is, I I love that you said, you know, don't be afraid to share your story. One of the you know the thinkers that I I follow has a line. He said, "Let your mess be your message." Right. So oftentimes people will see that as authenticity when they say, "Well, I mean." As an example, why do you want to work in finance? Well, I grew up with a single mom, you know, that didn't have the resources after my parents split when I was born. So I never wanted to be, you know, broke or like not be able to afford the next thing. So I was always very frugal and I've wanted to learn about investments and investing ever since I was, you know, a teenager. You know, once I connected those dots and sharing that with people then made them, you know, trust me more or like probably they had like an angle how they could resonate with that so yeah no beautiful summary and i i i you know i i couldn't agree more with the the pieces you shared here um yeah. before we before we uh come to an end um i think you know in summary we've learned so much we've learned from you how you went from you know working corporate to starting your own business your own brand then to becoming a coach and you know we've learned like what you can do if you're looking for a coach and we've also seen um you know what you should be looking at if you want to become a coach so thanks for sharing all those things and um maybe tell us a little bit where you're at right now just briefly and then a couple of projects that may be unfolding for yourself here within the near future and then um we'll we'll tell we'll we'll tell our audience where they can find you and your coaching platform and then we'll say goodbye yeah, to wrap it all up, I am working in between Germany and Ghana, West Africa right now. Mm -hmm. I love it here and uh, I will be working in, in both places. So I am now looking into new challenges. I and, and they are not too new because those are things that I was also doing, but I may be on television soon. I cannot mention what it is exactly as of yet, but there will be a very great opportunity for me coming up, being on Ghanaian's television and really being my authentic self. Awesome, be being on television in Ghana. Well, yeah. first of all, congratulations. I, I know we can't talk about it in detail yet, but uh, yeah. you know, once everything is, is said and done, we'll come and revisit and, and have you tell us more about it, which is, you know, fantastic and kudos Absolutely. to you. So it's beautiful looking, maybe we will be looking at this interview in a year or two. And this was the starting point in West Africa. Beautiful. It, it's going to be amazing. I think if we're going to be looking at this interview in two or three years, you know, before those other ventures and those other challenges and opportunities happen, it's a very interesting starting point coming from the, you know, I love Agreed. to reinvent myself. And I think it's about time to delivering my message in this stratosphere. I need to talk to black folks as well. So right, and I mean, look at your biracial background, right? Like, I mean, you can, you, you can flex and you've had a lot of courage to go out as a single woman to Ghana, who is probably considered as a person of, of lighter skin or white in Ghana, because, you know, everybody is a little bit darker than you. Someone is really mentioning my status over here. Hello? I don't want to be bombarded by nobody. I want to keep my single status. Now I'm playing with you. But yeah, you're absolutely right. It was, you know, it's, it, it, it's a beautiful journey. And I am very ready for this journey. And I can't wait. I'm super excited. So well, listen. Listen, I'm Jenny, we are super excited for you. I'm as a friend. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for you. And I know uh, bigger and better things will come. Right, and right. Um, before we part today, tell us briefly where people can find you, what the what the best ways are to follow you or connect with you. And then, right. of course, you know, we'll drop it in the show notes and I'll also link to it, um, you know, in the video. Awesome. I would love to meet you on 8, number 8, Oxygen, O-X-Y-J-E-N-N, -N, on Instagram. And 8oxygen.com is my now still German life coaching program, which is the level up coaching program. I mean, you can sign on to the mailing list. It will also soon be in English. We are working on it. And that's where you can find me. And of course, if you're a German speaker, 
You can also follow me on Coach Jenny and watch my motivational videos and take a glimpse into my world as well. There is a lot coming and I will keep you updated on those platforms. So I would love to see you there. Join me, join my journey and yeah, be my friend. Do well, it. thanks so much for sharing, Jenny. Thanks for your generous amount of time tonight. I know it's uh, time for you to wrap it up in Ghana as well, in Accra. Um, you know, much love. Thanks for your time. We'll talk soon, yeah? Thank you very much. This was an awesome interview. You, you did very well. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. You too. Bye now.